Hey, what's up, guys? I am coming at you live from the Haboob in Phoenix. No, I'm just kidding. This is just a funny shot I took the other day. I am actually in the uh, render farm wind tunnel of my studio. Can I get a little room tone? So if you read the title of this video, we're just playing around with some displacement maps today. I'm going to show you some cool stuff that I came up with uh, and some stuff I have no idea how it works and uh, some other stuff that's fun. This tutorial is meant to spark your imagination. As with a lot of things After Effects, playing around with it will help you find new ideas and how to do things. So let's check out the Sparkle. This one's simple, it just uses itself as a displacement map. Sparkle. Could be cool for some glitchy stuff, uh, moving in a circle, even a, a solid lined one through itself would be kinda cool. Alright, next one. This one's another simple one. Uh, uses a red and green displacement map to just move everything inside without actually adjusting position of any of the shapes. And that mat looks like that. I'm not going to show you how to build all the mats, but this one is basically a red layer and a green layer with gradients. And the red layer is added over top. That's just so that they can mix together. So you can have the red and green in different channels. So then you go back over here. You can see I've mapped red and green. They use the amount of red and green in the channels. Remember, 128 is mid-ground. All right, next. Takes a second. This one uses a time displacement and a displacement map. So let me turn off the time displacement so you can see what it actually looks like. It does that. And this map looks like that. It's a radial one, like in the last tutorial. So if you want to know how to make this map, just look at the last tutorial. Next. Next we have this thing. And its map looks like this. It's just based off the green channel. I'm not exactly sure why this doesn't go back to a line in between. Because what it should do is stretch from the 128 up here one way and then down here the other way. I guess it's because it's only like a sliver that it passes across. That's probably what it is actually. It's only the sliver of the thing. If I made that smaller, it would probably go away. So then it stretches on one side of that sliver and on the other side of the sliver doing this. Next is just a little test comp to show you kind of how it works. This is how the layer would be applied without any displacement. And we're, our green level is 255 here. As it goes down, you see we get near 128. It stays about the same as where it should be. And then as we go into the darker values, it goes down. The displacement is set to 440. So up here, it goes 440 up. And down here, it goes 440 down. All right, next one. This one is interesting. I just started to play with a mat that has like Venetian blinds in it. Uh, I'm going to have to solo that. Mat looks like that. So the red stuff is on the Venetian blinds. That's just the horizontal displacement. And the green is actually the motion. That's why it kind of does that weird, like, coming down this way and shifting over. So we'll turn that back off. Turn that off, too. Now you can see that. So that gave me an idea. I always like those plugins that let you just, like, stretch everything. So I played around with it, and I got this. And that's kind of neat. And the mat looks like that. Straight up gradient. But if you play with that, as I did here, you can get it to stretch in one direction. It's not absolutely perfect as like I've seen before because you get little chops, probably because of the uh, the granularity of the gradient, but still kind of cool looking. And if you go into our mat now, you'll see it goes from 255 to 128, 128 being normal, so that it doesn't go from both sides. You could also take this and set this to 1920, and then set this to zero, and then set these to the same number. Uh, make that zero and this one zero. So now it goes this way. And if we go back to our comp and then you modify this to not have any vertical there, but we change this to green and we do the same kind of thing there. You can stretch it along those lines. Go back to zero and we get horizontal. So that could be cool for like a transition or something. So as I said, you have to play around with it to get something cool, but hopefully something in here sparked an idea for you. I'm Joe from Workbench, and if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below, and make sure you follow us on workbench.tv for more great tutorials. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.